Good morning. Good morning, every well, good morning to you all. It's afternoon here, but good morning and welcome to Life Class. L I F E, live in faith every day. God bless each and every one of you. I'm going to give you a few moments to come on. I am on just a little bit early, but I um, wanted to be able to say hello and hi, y'all, and hello and all of that stuff. So I'm going to give you a little time and um, want to remind you that our books are on sale. They're two for $30. Thank you for those of you who've already purchased. Um, I will get those in the mail next week. You should certainly get those before Christmas. Um, and so, hey, Sister Janet, God bless you. I am live this time. This is not a replay or a scheduled video. I'm so glad I've missed you all so much. And um, I'm usually on trying to make sure that I can respond or say hey or whatever. But I'm so glad to be able to share this time with you. And um, hopefully you can hear me well. You see me well. Of course, I'm using C Spire's Wi-Fi. Um, well, it's not even Wi-Fi. Their, their internet, their what, whatever it's called. And um, because my mobile gadget didn't work. And um, I didn't want to use the hotel. So God bless everybody. Let me know if y'all have any problems with seeing or hearing anything. But there's probably not much I can do except to tell you to refresh or catch the replay. So God bless everybody. And uh, welcome to Life Class. L-I-F-E. Live in faith every day. Good morning, Elder Ingram. Good morning to your wife as well. Good morning, Lisa Gray. Hey, y'all. Good morning to you. We are grateful for another day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. He alone deserves the honor, the glory, and the praise. He is mighty to save. There is no God like our God. Hallelujah. He rules and he reigns in the kingdom of men. He rules and reigns in this world. And you may say, Sister Edna, well, if he's ruling and reigning, why are there so many things happening? Well, it's happening because the scripture is being fulfilled and everybody don't love God. And there are, there are repercussions to our actions. There are repercussions to our behaviors. There is a price to be paid. And when we look at our world, that's why we, we sing that song. If everybody uh, would love Jesus, would follow Jesus, would serve the Lord, how much better our world would be. Thank you for those of you who share as soon as we come on. I want to remind you again, our books are on sale. They are thirty uh, two for thirty dollars. I'll pay shipping and I'll send a free gift for each book. Uh, use the link. Of course, I'm not able to pop that in there for you today, but I will later. Uh, pop that in there for you to have that link. But it's on our page. Uh, it's on our website. And if you'll send that, just disregard the price that's in the email that you'll get back. I'll respond and email you and let you know it's two for thirty dollars. I'll pay the shipping and handling. I'll also send a free gift. Um, well, this will expire probably uh, next week. If you want it for Christmas, you need to order before then. Uh, otherwise, uh, there'll be regular price after uh, Christmas Eve or maybe Christmas. I'm not sure yet. Uh, please take advantage of the products that are for sale. I didn't get a chance to have a sale on our um shirts and other products. I'll post that link shortly as well. But I want you to take advantage of those. I have new products for life class. Um, so you, there's sweatshirts, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, caps, whatever. If you see something that you like, purchase it. If you don't see anything, let me know what you want. Someone did tell me that they wanted dish towels. I thought that's a great idea for Grace for today. I'm working on that as well. So good morning to all of you. I want to get started. I don't want to spend much time. Um, I only will be on about 30 to 45 minutes today, but I wanted to be able to share with you uh, what the Lord had given me. So we're starting a new series. Good morning, Sister Trini. Uh, we're starting a new series today uh, that I will continue on for Graced for today as well. So this is life class number 26. I'm considering not having life class in 2023, but we'll see how that works out. So uh, as of right now, this is December the 17th, and this is our 26th life class, which roughly puts us at close to two years covering. Thank you so much. Thank you all for sharing as you come on. Um, so today we're starting a new series called Indomitable. You see it listed there. It's I-N-D-O-M-I-T-A-B-L-E. And um, when I was listening to someone sharing uh, about, it was really about promises of God, but um, the word indomitable just spoke to me. 
And it reminded me and and said to me that we as the people of God are indomitable. We are, and I want to give you some synonyms and a definition for this word. It's not a word that we use very often, but it's a word that's true for who we are. Let's get to that. So God bless all of you. Thank you for joining. Please share. And uh, I want to get into this teaching. I have a foundation. And what we'll be doing is laying our foundation today. And then Monday morning, Lord willing, we will pick up a teaching uh, on this word indomitable uh, that goes into more depth and detail. Because I believe when you find something that's relevant, um, you are able to apply it across the board. When you understand, that's what the scripture says, good understanding gives favor. When we understand something, we're able to apply it in all the areas of our life. We had a good series on relegate, and I hope that that um, what reminded you and spoke to you in your life, your daily life, and how you should live and put the promises of God as something to be remembered, to be spoken, to be utilized. Uh, it's relevant to our lives. And we choose not to relegate the promises of God. Um, no, ma'am, I do not have any. Um, I do have some. I do have some. Do have notes. I didn't share it with y'all. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Um, but I think um, if you will go to drive, you will see, I think I shared this, this is to somebody else who's listening, who's going to, my administrator. If you will go to drive and look for the um, um, life class folder, you will see uh, a folder called um, something through December and it will have all the notes for December 17th in there. If you don't find it, don't worry about it. I apologize. It's been a little scattered morning trying to do what y'all told me to do to relax. When you relax, I tried relaxing. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Y'all pray for me. So let's get started. So we're looking today at Romans. That's going to be our scripture for today. Romans 8, 31 through 39. But let me give you a good definition. The word indomitable means impossible to subdue or defeat. I want to say it again. Impossible to subdue or or defeat. Indomitable. All right. It also means that uh, cannot be subdued or overcome as a person, as your will or courage. It is unconquerable. I haven't been to the beach yet, Sister Janet, but I'm going to go get some flip-flops because I didn't come to I didn't come to relax, but the Lord just kind of orchestrated things and permitted things that allowed me to be able to stay a little longer. And uh, so I'm going to get some flip-flops and I'm going to go to the beach. I'm going to the beach, I think. Uh, unconquerable and indomitable warrior. Now, let's look at some synonyms for this word indomitable. It means invincible, obstinate. We often think of obstinate and stubborn as something awful but it's not when it when it pertains to our believing and speaking the word of god over our lives indomitable indomitable invincible obstinate it doesn't mean you may not have a setback it does mean that you push through it you push through that uh, yes, I may have been depressed for a season. I was walking through some heavy times, but I pushed through it. Yes, I had some financial uh, struggles, but I pushed through. Yes, I, hey, Tracy Spencer, I lost some things, but God, because of, of what I know, who I know him to be, he helps me to be invincible. It's not because of who I am. It's because I know who he is in me. The great one is in me. All right, I see you, Missionary Green. Uh, we, we, the greater one in us empowers us to do more than we could do on our own. Indomitable. It's not a word that you may struggle to pronounce it, but go ahead and spend your time trying to uh, pronounce it so you can remind yourself you are indomitable. You are indomitable. Yes, I'm going to have some trials. The scripture says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but... There is always going to be a but there that says on the other side of this, on the other side of that struggle, on the other side of that issue, on the other side of that heaviness, that sickness, that financial stress, 
the Lord delivers us out of them all. He is going to get me through this. My faith looks to him. My heart is content to believe that what he has spoken over me and about me. I feel like I'm scooting away from y'all. I need to be close. Hallelujah. What he has spoken, he is able to fulfill. Fulfill. All I need to do is work with him. All I need to do is believe that what he has spoken, he will bring to pass. What he has said about my life, about Edna Gray Jameson, about Grace for Today, about Life Class, about Tabernacle of Prayer, about whatever the name of your church or your ministry is. If God has spoken it, he's going to deliver us out of them all. He's going to be my way maker. He's going to be my door opener. He's going to be the one that gives me strength I didn't know I had. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. I'm yelling already. I hope, my, hope the people next to me can't hear me. But I need us to get it. Because the enemy is coming to press you. He's coming to steal from you. To steal your faith. To steal your joy. To steal your peace. To steal your anything that would make you doubt what God said about you. About your spouse. About your children. God, The enemy is coming to steal from you. To make sure you don't get to your next. To make exactly Elder Ingram. Our God always prevails. Hallelujah. He brought me through this. Y'all remember that? Oh, yes. He brought me through that. Lord, I'm grateful. I think that's right. To you, we must remind ourselves. He is going to bring us through. He will bring us through. He will bring us out. We are indomitable. Hallelujah. All right. All right. All right. So. So. The other synonyms, I only got to two. To, to. So being obstinate when it comes to believing, show they do. Lord, sister Cassie, you show right. Um, when it comes to saying what God says and believing the word of God, you need to, hey, sister Regina, you need that bulldog kind of faith that will, will, will be tenacious, that will hold on, that will fight. Don't you lose your faith. Don't you lose your confidence in God because of what somebody says about you, about what they've spoken over your life. They are a liar. You are who God says you are. You can do what he says you can. You might need to be fine-tuned. You might need to have some things, you know, tweaked a little bit. You might need him to strengthen some areas in your life, but whatever, he is going to give you the tools and the relationships you need to be perfected. The scripture says that it is God who, per, who will perfect me. He will mature me. He, he will grow me up. But we must allow him to grow us up. Some people don't want to grow up. Y'all remember that, that um, store that's now gone out of business, Toys R Us? I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't want to grow up. Well, we have to grow up. We have to grow in grace and in knowledge of who he is. We grow in grace and in knowledge of who he is. We must grow. I'm going to say it again because you need to get this. We want the benefits without understanding there is a process to it. We must renew our minds with the word of God and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You can't believe the same old things and expect God to change things for you. You've got to begin expecting things to change in your outlook, your expectation, your perspective. But if all we see is the awful things in life, if all we see is gloom and doom and despair, if all we see is all the bad things happening, yes, bad things are happening, but it doesn't change who God is. It doesn't change who God is. Hallelujah. He is still the great big God he said he would be. The great big God he said he'd be. He still is. I feel like walking around this room and telling y'all, he still is who he says he is. He still is. He is still our keeper. He is still our helper. He is still our, our comforter. He is still my peace. He is who he says he is. Just because people act like they can't see God and he doesn't reveal himself there to them. 
because they can't see. The scripture says that, that there are certain things that are only going to be revealed to those who know him, who walk with him. So they're not going to see what you see. They're not going to experience what you experience, but they will see you experiencing it and wonder what's going on with that. It's God. He's the great I am. When we realize that, when we begin speaking it over our spouses, over ourselves, over our children, over the children at church, over our grandchildren, over those that we work with, begin speaking the word. Hey, cousin Gladys, speaking the word. That's my first cousin. Our daddies were blood brothers. All right, all right, I'm done. We must begin speaking the word of God rather than believing the lies of the enemy. Yes, I've had some hard times. I've had difficult times personally. But I know that when you stay the course, when you believe the promises of God, when you speak the word of God, he brings about a change. We are indomitable. Impossible to subdue or defeat. I will not be defeated by the circumstances of life. I will not allow them to defeat me. I will not be defeated by the circumstances of life. I will not allow them to defeat me. And it says, the things I see, they are temporal. They are all subject to change. I will not allow them to defeat me. What we see around us is temporary. And God will show himself strong for those whose hearts are turned toward him, whose eyes are focused on him and not being moved by what they hear uh, around them that's contrary to his word. Let me read on. I need to finish these so I can get to my scripture. I'm going to be out of time. I got about 20 more minutes. I'm not saying all long today. He says um, uh, another synonym for the word indomitable. Great. Thank you. It is... Um, unbeatable, willful. Look at the children of Israel. They only suffer defeat when they cease to make God their God. When they started looking at everybody else, when they started believing what it all the, they wanted to be like other people. Listen, he called us out of the world. We're not supposed to, to join the world. We're supposed to be come out from among them and be ye holy. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you. Be ye holy, for I am holy. We need, you say, well, I don't know what that is. Well, get in the word and find out. Get around some folk who, uh, who say they are holy, who say they trust God, who say they believe God. Live a life that's set apart for him. He is still calling for that. He is still saying, I want you to be completely mine. That's all holiness is. I want you to walk like me. I want you to live in a manner that pleases me. I want you to, to let me get glory from your life. I want you to live in a manner that I can bless you. I can help you. I Put yourself in a position to be blessed. The children of Israel lost battles whenever they allowed sin into their lives. Remember, they fought the battle at Jericho. They were much smaller. But God gave them victory, right? But then they left there and went to fight against AI. AI, that's how you pronounce it. That's the, that's the word. A, letter A, the letter I. That was the name of the, the city. Who were much smaller than Jericho. They only sent a few people over there. But they got whooped. Why did they get whooped? Though they were indomitable, whenever they let sin into the camp, they lost. They lost. They lost. And whenever we let sin, disobeying God, not honoring God into our lives, we will lose too. Let me read on. So when it comes to things that oppose God, we need to be obstinate, stubborn. Stubborn. I refuse. When they, and then when they realized what had happened and they would approach God and said, why did you let us lose? He said, don't come to me. You better check your camp. I love it. You better check your camp. I'm not your issue. I'm not your issue. When we find ourselves, whether it may be just a season we're going through, but don't lose your faith. 
Let me read on. The other synonyms, willful, dogged, insurmountable, resolute. I love that word. Ruthless, staunch, unconquerable, undefeatable, unflinching. Let's keep ourselves in a position that we will always win the victory. We may lose sometimes. We may find some things that we didn't do right. There are things I didn't do right. And God helped me. He redeemed. What a great God we serve. If we miss it, the scripture tells us he will redeem our lives from destruction. We, we lost some things, but he redeems our lives. He turned things around for us. Look here. Romans 8, 31 through 39. This is the King James Version. What shall we then say to these things? Now, I've told you all about Blue Letter Bible. You're welcome to use that. I'm not able to share a screen or anything on this. But he says this. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The scripture is clear. It's clear. If he gave his son for us, what will he withhold from us? What the enemy would have you believe is that you can do things so bad that God won't forgive you. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. That's what he does. He that's, he's, verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Verse 34, I'm going to get to the, I need to read from a different translation. Then we're going to, I need to cover this because that's my scripture. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be, who can oppose us and win? Who can oppose us and win? Who can oppose us and get the victory? As long as we stay humble before, resist the devil. So the scripture says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will run from you. See, we try to fight some battles ourselves. You need to know when to speak and when to be quiet. Let me read you this next one. He says, um, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness? or peril, or sword? It's a question. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. No, verse 37, nay, which means no, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Indomitable. <laughs> but this is how we're indomitable. He says we are more than conquerors through him. How? Through him that loved us. That's how we gain the victory. Indomitable, indomitable also means victorious in the simplest sense. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Sometimes, and I was thinking about this as I was preparing. Sometimes we don't understand how much God loves us. Because we compare his love to the love here. Who people here will love you based on uh, you're doing everything that they want done. You're doing everything how they want done. You've got to earn their love. God didn't like that. You don't have to earn his love. He just loves you. He loves the sinner. He hates sin, but he loves the sinner. And he wants to give them their his best. They don't get that. Jesus came to demonstrate the love. He says, we are more than conquerors in all these things through him that loved us. I need you to get that because sometimes we don't experience that kind of love. And when we do experience it, we find it so hard to fathom and to imagine that somebody could continue to love me even though I did this, to love me even though I did that. I pray that we all experience that. That kind of love that forgives without you having to earn. That kind of love that pushes you into greatness, 
even though the other person may be falling far behind, but they continue to push you. They are struggling themselves. A friend of mine texted me this the other day and said, um, love isn't uh, just when I give you things because I have more than enough. Love is me giving you what you need, even though I'm struggling. I'm giving you attention, though I'm struggling. I'm giving you finances, finances, though I'm struggling. I'm praying for your success, though I don't have that success. May we all experience and encounter that kind of love. Who looks out for us, who wants the best for us, even though they don't find themselves succeeding. I pray that we all experience so that we are better able to understand the love that pushes us. Good morning, Sister Patricia. That pushes us into greater. Who doesn't consider itself. If I had time, I'd go to 1 Corinthians 13 and talk to you about that kind of love. That kind of love that loves in spite of or it because of and not because you did everything right, but because you they just love you. You just love your children, even if they don't do everything right. Let me read on. He says, for I am persuaded that un right Felicia, I thought unconditional love. We don't all get that because we didn't grow up with it. You may have been in an abusive situation and understanding how a father could love in spite of. We may not get that. You may not get that. You may not understand the depth of that. But that's how God loves you. You will never earn his love. He just loves you. Oh yeah, you said some things you shouldn't have said. He still deeply cares about your welfare. He wants the best for you. You had messed up so bad that he won't love you and still give you his best. Okay, I want you to get it. I want you to get it. Because if ain't nobody telling you how much, how lovely you are or what a joy you are, or how, what a blessing you are. I want you to hear it. I want you to believe it. I don't have to know you personally to know uh, or know all your flaws or all the things you've done wrong to say he loves you. Beloved, I know he loves you because he loves me. And I haven't done everything right. I'm just grateful that he loves me like that. It took me a long time, a few decades to understand that depth of love. But I'm grateful that he loves me. But he loves me too much to leave me in the mess I was in. You talk about grateful. Grateful. Here, verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This does not give me permission to sin uh, willfully. It means that I want to please him so much, I don't want to go out there and do anything wrong. I want to please him so much that I want to find out how do I please you? What gives you honor? How do I, if I were married, how do I honor my husband? I don't go sleep around and say I'm honoring my husband. I don't go around uh, and, and spend money we don't have saying that I still honor my husband and respect him. And the same for him. We, when we love, there is a demonstration. Love, faith without corresponding actions or love is dead. I want to read this to you from the International Children's Bible. Then we're going to pray because I'm going to stop there. I have several pages, but I want to cover this for the next uh, week or so, okay? Um, we'll go into the new year with something, maybe this, but I don't know. But I want us to understand the enemy is going to challenge you. You will be challenged. You will be tested. You will be tried. Don't you ever think that being a believer is so easy. It's easy. He says, my yoke is easy, but it's still a yoke. It's still a laying down of ourselves, our own will, our own desires, and taking up our cross and following him. You're not going to receive just good at the hand of the Lord. He wants you to grow up, beloved. He wants to mature you, beloved. He wants to strengthen you, beloved. Let me read this to you from the International Children's Bible. Okay? Y'all ready? Here we go. So what we she show I can't even talk. So what should we say about this? If God is for us, then no one can defeat us. 
Do you remember when um, Balak uh, wanted Balaam to curse? I think that's right. To curse the children of God. And yeah, I, I covered this in a lesson some time back. Um, and he wanted them to curse the children of God. And God came to, to Balaam and said, you better not. You better not open your mouth against them. That's my translation. You better not open your mouth against them. And, and Balaam told the, told the king, he said, I can't. God has blessed them. I can't curse them. I, I, I can't say anything against them. And ended up, one, one pastor says, we can make them curse themselves, but we can't curse them. How did they do it? They started trying, letting them see things. And that's why we guard our heart. We guard our eyes. We guard our ear gates. Because those things, the Bible says, uh, guard your heart for out of it are the boundaries or the issues, the boundaries of your life. If we want something so much that we're willing to disobey God to get it, it will cause us to curse ourselves. You know what that definition is? Y'all remember it? I covered it. It's the word definition of the word lust. Desiring something so much that we're willing to disobey God in order to get it. Even if it's a standard the world has set. We want to follow it. We have more influence with the world than we do with God. We have more of a desire to look like the world and our attire and what we speak out of our mouths and how we, what we spend money on than we do. I want to please God. I want influence with God. I want influence with God. I want the devil to say she's awake again. Let me get out of her way. I want him to be afraid when, when, when sister, when missionary green gets down to pray and bombard heaven. I want the enemy to be afraid when, because you don't know what sister Heather is going to say or sister Dion is going to say or sister Cassie is going to say and what they're going to take authority over because they're indomitable. But if you don't know who you are, the enemy will lie to you and tell you, you have no strength. You have no power. You have no authority. But if God be for us, then who can defeat us? Then no one, that's not even a question. If God is for us, then no one can defeat us. I've got to learn now. Don't get me wrong. We're like babies. When we're babes in Christ, we have to learn how to walk with him more perfectly. The natural babies, they learn to walk. They fall down. They get back up. But they... They still learn how to walk with him more perfectly. They learn how to walk with God more perfectly. Let's read verse 32. Deacon to save. I didn't get to join you last night. I'm out of state, but I heard y'all had a wonderful time. Praise God for you, brother. Verse 32. God let even his own son suffer for us. God gave his son for us all. So with Jesus, God will surely give us all things. Listen, you don't have to believe what I'm saying. Can you believe the Bible? Can you believe what the word of God says and live in a manner that says, I don't know how God's going to fix this. I just know that he will. And that gives me comfort. I don't know how God's going to get me out, how I'm going to overcome this fear I have, how I'm going to get out of this bad relationship or how he's going to fix my money. I just know that if I tithe, if I give my best offering, he's going to, he's going to make a way for me. He will, he's not slack concerning his promises. He is long suffering, but if God spoke it, he said in his word, I'll make you the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. I'm going to bless you going out and coming in. What kind of love is that? What kind of love is that? He is for us. So no one can defeat us. We are. My new series, Indomitable. Indomitable. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. Not because I'm so bright and so brilliant, but the greater one is in me. He will teach my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my fingers. I'm giving y'all scriptures. Y'all better get it. Y'all better get it. Verse 32 I just read to you verse 33. Who can accuse the people that God has chosen? No one. God is the one who makes them right. God is the one who makes us right. The scripture says he redeems our lives from destruction. 
He makes us right. He makes us right. Lord, and that ought to be our prayer. Lord, make us right. I don't want to be the, uh, not right in the sense of I don't ever want to make a mistake and I don't. But I don't want to be uh, not the right. I'm in a discussion with somebody and I don't want to be wrong. That's still pride. I just want to do right. I want to be right. I want to walk right. I want to love right. Hallelujah. I got to go. Who can say that God's people are guilty? No one. Christ Jesus died, but that is not all. He was also raised from the dead, from death. And now he is on God's right side and is begging God for his, for us. Can anything separate us from the love Christ? My, I don't have time to even feel like I can even uh, uh, dissect this well. What kind of love is this that God has for us? Listen, it's his love that causes us to be be indomitable. It is what he has done for us that causes us to be the ones who are invincible. I don't know everything and you don't know everything, but we ought to know this of a, of a surety. It is, if God be for us, then no one can defeat us. We will not be caught off guard. We will not be caught off guard. Let him lead you. My prayer is that God would lead you. And as we go into this series starting on Monday, um, got to figure out how I'm going to do that too because of the time difference. But I believe God's going to speak to us. As you enter 2023, God wants you to be strong in him and in the power of his might. That the enemy will be afraid and that you will have confidence, not in you, but in whose you are. You can't see my hand. And in whose you are. You belong to God. You belong to God. Man, if somebody would just type on the screen, I belong to God. I belong to God. I'm his daughter. I'm his son. I belong to him. His name is stamped on me. I belong to him. I belong to him. I'm waiting for somebody to type that in for me. And then I'm going to pray. And we'll pick this up on Monday. I'll go back to this chapter. Um, but I want us to get it. I belong to him. I belong to him. I belong to him. I belong to him. I'm his. And he's going to look out for me. He's going to look out for me. I'm yelling already. But I got to go. I do belong to God. I belong to him. His name is on me. Thank you, Jesus. His name is on me. And once you begin to understand, I can do all things through Christ and he be I belong to him. There's a song that says, I'm my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is love. I'm my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is love. I'm my beloved and he is mine. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. I got to go. I got to go. Listen, let's pray. I didn't put my prayer in there because I didn't write one this time. But I think you got it. I think you got it. We're going to start this series strong. Stay the course. Read this scripture, Romans 8, 31 through 39. You can go online and look it up. Look into it and allow God to build you up. I may die. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you've begun in us and what you're doing. Let your glory be revealed in our lives and your anointing break and destroy every yoke. We receive these things done in Jesus' name. So it is. Amen. All right, everybody, my time is gone. Monday morning, I'll be able to do a live, I think, unless I can figure out how to do... Um, a recording. We'll see. But if not, join me live Monday morning at 7 15 a.m. Central Time. And uh, we'll share the word of God again, continuing to talk about indomitable. All right. Don't forget my books are on sale, two for thirty dollars. We'll pop that link in there a bit later and um order those. They're two for thirty. I'll pay shipping. I'll send a free gift with each one. And um yeah. I'll put this on YouTube as soon as I can. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Please pray for me and I'm going to pray for you. I believe God to do great things in our lives and we will be the indomitable people of God. All right. So join me Monday morning at 7, 15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the word of God is never wasted and you have been graced for today. Please continue to live in faith every day. Peace.